Good morning, family of Jesus. Uh, thank you again for this time with you. Thank you for all the testimonies that have been coming our way in this time of the lockdown and the shutdown. And I asked this morning that if you do have a testimony that you'd like me to share with everyone, please text it through to me or email Brother Brian. He'll get it to me so that we can continue to testify and encourage each other, motivate each other and strengthen each other. So this morning, if we can take a hold of the word of God, I'd like to read us a piece out of the uh, book of Ephesians from chapter 2. So while you're getting that ready, uh, many years ago, uh, just after I came to salvation and I, and I was uh, starting my ministry uh, in the kingdom of God, the Lord allowed me for six years to minister in our hometown under the Satanists. And at that stage, I was working with the, um, the police occult unit and they would take me along uh, with all the raids and the busts that they did. And then afterwards, if they had caught someone and uh, they took them to the, the prison cells. Uh, sometimes the inspectors allowed me to sit and minister to the Satanists that they caught. So I can remember one evening sitting with a, a Satanist in uh, a cell and just listening to him and, and listening to the death and the destruction that he was speaking about and, and believing and thinking. And I thought to myself, Lord, um, how good are you to save me? And, and I pray, Lord, that, that one day, somewhere, that you will save this man because he's got knowledge to then be able to help and, and save other people. And at that very moment, the Holy Spirit ministered to my spirit and, and just dropped and, and imprinted a piece of truth into my heart and my spirit. And the Holy Spirit said to me that the only thing at that stage that was separating me from that Satanist was the grace of Jesus. That's the only thing. By nothing that I did or said, by, by not my gifts or my talents, not my education or, or anything else, it was only the grace of Jesus Christ that was separating me at that moment from that Satanist. So this morning, I'd like to read this piece for us. And please sit carefully and, and hear with your spirit what the Holy Spirit wants to say to you this morning. So the Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 1, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. So what the word is teaching us here is, is clearly true in, in how we used to live before we came to salvation and before we came to know the Lord is, is that we were just, we were swimming in the filth of this world and, and, and everything that, that Satan had to offer us, we we were grabbing a hold of thinking that that would fill us and, and fulfill us and give us purpose in, in life. But then in verse 4, the word of God says, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. Now this comes back to the scripture that we ministered um, or read the, the other morning where the Lord said that I knew you even before I formed you in your mother's womb. So even before we knew God, God knew us and he knew what he had placed us here on earth to do. So the Bible goes on and says in verse 6, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show his incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. So here the word clearly teaches us that it was only by the grace of Jesus 
that we were saved. And every single day, we open our eyes, we are walking, talking, and living in the grace of Jesus. It is not because I am a fancy guy, it's not because I'm highly educated, it's not because I have status in, in the town I live in, or the church I serve in, it is only by the grace of Jesus. When Jesus looks at us, irrelevant of our stature, or our education, or our wealth, or how poor we are, when Jesus looks at us, he looks at us under that blanket of grace, that's it. We are all the same, we are all equal, there's nothing that separates us. It's only the grace of Jesus that takes us and places us apart from this world. And one day when the Lord comes back again, the second coming of Jesus, that is where the sheep will be separated from the goats. And it is only the grace of Jesus that is, is, is falling on us that, that day. So as the scripture ministers to your heart and your mind this morning, I pray that you will constantly keep in mind that sometimes we step out and, and maybe we want to do or say something in pride or arrogance, but then at that very moment to think, to stand and to say to myself, Jacques, the only thing that is separating me from this person or these people that I am talking to right now, that I am facing right now, that I'm trying to defend myself right now with is the only thing that is separating me is the grace of Jesus. That's the only thing. And then I must go down on my knees every single day and I must thank the Lord for his mercy and his grace and his goodness and his kindness because it's only that that saved me. So as we go into prayer now, I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to bless you and will reveal to you that in this day, how big the grace and the mercy of Jesus is in our lives. Thank you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for your word and the truth of your word. We thank you, Father God, for every single morning being able to still reach out to each other and minister to each other. I pray, Father God, that, that this um, will be um, edifying and motivating to everyone, Father God. I pray, Lord Jesus, as we spend time um, like this, as a family in Jesus, that we will still grow closer to each other and to you. I pray that the Holy Spirit will bind us together by his spirit, by his love, um, and, and Lord, that you will continue to guide and lead and teach us through your Holy Spirit. Remind us of everything that you said, everything that you taught when you were on earth, Lord Jesus. And please continue to guide us in, in that perfect way that you have paved for us here on earth. We love you, Lord Jesus. And, uh, and, and Lord, I, I pray that you will continue to draw us closer to you, Lord Jesus. And give us that desire and that hunger to get into your word more and to, to, to spend more time with you, Lord Jesus. Um, in prayer and, and in fasting and just seeking your face. And we thank you for that, Father God. Lord, I bless you. And I pray, Lord, that if it's your will, that we will meet again with our, our family tomorrow. And I pray and I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, family in Jesus. I, I truly pray that you will be blessed today. I pray that um, uh, God's mercy and grace will be revealed to you. I pray that a fresh anointing and a blessing of the Holy Spirit will rain down on you. I pray that if today you are I'm seeking God's uh, face for healing um, or for a gift, a gift of the Holy Spirit, that I pray that the Lord will hear you and I pray that he will bless you and I pray that when he blesses you, um, that you will start practicing that gift and, and that you will only lean on him and rely on him. And uh, until we meet again tomorrow, um, I pray in Jesus' name that you will be blessed exceedingly abundantly above all you may ask or think. In the name of Jesus, amen.